We're back again with New York Times best-selling author Matthew Quick. Hello, Matthew. Hello. Silver Linings Playbook, and do you, how do you feel about the movie, the film versus the book? Do you feel that it, it best represented your book? I think David O. Russell did a, a very good job adapting my novel. I think that the the flavor of it that is there, um, definitely the intent of it is there. Uh, you know, obviously the book is mine, so I'm going to be partial to it. And uh, I think I was trying to do something a little bit different than than David was was trying to do. Um, but the beautiful thing was that in conjunction, they they started a really important conversation about mental health. And I know that was very important to me. And you know, by doing promotions with David, I, I came to understand that it was very important to him as well. And he was quite open about why he did the film. Um, it was a gift to his son, uh, who, like myself, is is a member of the mental health community. Um, and everybody I worked with, you know, um, whether they talked about it privately or or publicly, uh, they had very specific reasons for doing the film, um, which I th I thought was very heartening, and it's I was very proud to be a, a part of it. That all being said, uh, I'm always happy when people read the book um, because that's my art. You know, that's that's the that's what I wanted to put into the world. So, there are about 30 million people in the United States that have mental health challenges every year. That's pretty astounding. It's a pretty astounding statistic. In the Silver Linings playbook, how did you feel about Bradley Cooper and some of the other actors that were picked? Did, did that fit for you? I was really happy that um, Bradley Cooper was picked because he's, he's a Philly local guy. Um, you know, he's, he's spotted at the Eagles games, at, right. you know, sometimes. So that's, that's always nice when, you know, you have somebody local to play a, a Philly character. I was... Um, really kind of disappointed at first when Jennifer Lawrence was cast and Anne Hathaway was cast first and then she dropped out and Jennifer Lawrence, even though I, I really admired her, I thought she was way too young for the part. But then when I saw her, uh, the first time I saw the film, I was just blown away and I was so happy um, that David had made that choice. I also think that Jennifer Lawrence plays Tiffany close to the book. Um, her and Anna Pumker's Dr. Cliff are probably the, the two characters that are most consistent with the novel, so um, I was very glad about that. And you know, anytime Robert De Niro is involved, you know, it's, it's not too shabby, right? You know, I mean, right. he's, he's a, it was amazing to meet him and, and to, to be involved with him. It's great, classy guy too, very classy De Niro. Doesn't Robert De Niro and Bradley Cooper have a very special relationship off camera as well? They do, um, almost, uh, you know, in a father-son type way. They're very close and. Um, the scene where Robert De Niro cries in the film when he's talking to Bradley, um, David told me that wasn't even scripted. He didn't even call for that. Um, so, you know, there's, there's pretty real emotions going on between both those two characters, great chemistry. Um, you know, and I know David was very grateful for that. He talked about that at length. Many of your books, your novels, have been optioned for, for movies. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's it's heady. It's you know, exciting. I'm very, I'm very grateful for that. Um, you know, I could go through the lists. Um, you know, forgive me, Leonard Peacock is with the Weinstein Company, who did uh, Silver Linings. Uh, the Good Luck of Right Now is DreamWorks and Steven Spielberg. My next book, Love May Fail, is Sony. Um, the other YAs have been optioned as well. Uh, you know, and it's just, it's, it's really gratifying to have that. You know, it, it really helps a lot. Um, to, to put your, your your work on that big platform. Um, it's what every author dreams about. And I feel in, incredibly lucky and grateful that people in LA seem to be paying attention and seem to get my work and enjoy it. So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have another good ride soon. Your new book that you just mentioned, is that coming out in 2015 or is that, because I, I haven't seen much about that yet. Yeah, Love May Fail will be out in the summer of 2015, and I, I can't talk a lot about it now oh. because, because it's kind of under wraps, but we'll be, we'll be promoting that soon. Probably in the next couple months, there'll be uh, some more announcements about that. Can you give us a little hint about what it's about? Just a it was tiny very, one? It was very much inspired by um, my, my teaching time. It's, it's it, kind of in a nutshell, it's about... Uh, a former student who, who comes back to, to save a teacher. It's, it's about much more than that. Um, it's definitely about mental health again, um, but I'm really proud of it. And my wife seems to think it's my best work yet. And my people in LA 
we're very thrilled with it as well. So, so hopefully everyone else will like it too. When you're writing, do you ever wonder or kind of get some cold feet wondering if this next novel is going to be a hit or going to, or going to really represent you or fail in some way? Do you go through that as a writer? Yeah, I mean, every time you go to the page, um, it's difficult. Uh, sometimes I, I romanticize writing the Silver Linings Playbook because I wrote it, uh, you know, in my in-laws' basement when nobody knew what I was doing and nobody ever expected me to have a career. Um, once you get a movie deal and, you know, you go to the Oscars and all of that, uh, expectations are, are a lot higher the next time around. And so dealing with those expectations and um, dealing with the spotlight and, and doing media and all of that is it's definitely um, puts you in a different headspace than where you were when you were just writing. And I try to tell young writers who are up and coming that, you know, where you are now is really a beautiful place to be because you don't have all of these voices in your head. It's just you and the page. And I think once you start to publish and you go through the ups and downs of publishing and you realize that it's a business and um, you're not just making art, but you're, you're trying to, to have all these relationships with many different people, it, it does change things and, and it's never the same again. It's not to say it's not a good thing because um, I really enjoy the relationships with the people I have in New York and LA, um, but it definitely, um, it puts pressure on you, it does. And you know, um, just like you know, David had pressure on him when he made Silver Linings to you know, put people in movie theaters and sell tickets, you know, we have pressure to sell books and, and to meet expectations. So that, that, can, be, that, can, that can weigh right. heavily on you. Well, you're doing a great job. And thanks so much for being with us and for all that you're giving to everybody. Well, I appreciate you, that. My thanks pleasure. For me Are you looking to reinvent yourself? If so, stay tuned because when we come back, we'll share one woman's story that will drive you on to create a new you.